Looks like they're going to be continuing in on the carnage though. They crossbowed the cat and they are going to be getting three tokens here. However, we're ambushed by the Marquise de Cat, which is awesome. But this is just another one of the things like this is absolutely brutal. How many points the Ranger gets from this? This is this is their second turn and they are at 12 points in the game. Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam Smith and today I have got some Lizard Cult gameplay for you. I really, really hope that you enjoy this game. It is wacky. It is wild. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's dive right into the game here. We have got the cats, we have got the vagabond, we've got me playing the lizard cult, and then we've also got an eerie player. And right now we are just doing the game setup, so the cats are just trying to figure out. Uh, it looks like somebody recognized that uh, it was me from YouTube. It's always nice, it's always nice. You know, if you're ever playing with me, definitely let me know. Um, I love to chat with you guys, so uh, definitely let me know. So the cat's going to start into the fox corner to the left. I'm going to place that blacksmith that looks like, oh, sorry, workshop up, up in the bunny. Um, and then the recruiter down in the middle bunny clearing. <laughs> looks, uh, some of the chatting in, in here is really funny. And then we also got, um, obviously, the eerie going to be starting opposite the Marquise de Cat. But what leader are they going to go with? looks like they're going to go with the commander early game. So obviously at this point, I'm thinking this is going to be pretty wild. Um, and then we've got the ranger coming in. Um, it, it might've been a counter pick to the commander. I don't know, but uh, the ranger coming in for the vagabond, it's uh, not going to be pretty. So now I'm thinking on my side, I'm thinking uh, I've got one bunny. I've got one wild, one fox card. Um, and so since I did have at least one bunny, I started on bunny, um, cause I couldn't start in a Fox corner. So kind of had pretty bad hand for my options here, but at least I start with at least, you know, one garden. So better than nothing. All right. So the cats are going to overwork, then use Hawks for hire. It looks like, uh, they are going to go ahead Kind of one of the things in this early game stage um, that you want to want to be doing as the lizard cult especially is be just kind of keeping track of what cards are being played. Okay, so it looks like looks like the Marquis de Cat are going to be laying down a recruiter in the top right mouse clearing, and as well as a sawmill uh, in a really protected spot in that kind of middle central bunny clearing. Um, and then, yeah, so this was a nice standard kind of opener for the Marquise de Cat. Uh, nothing too crazy here. They did a recruit, as it looks like, and then <laughs> a lot of, lot of, lot of hawks for hire because they were able to pull off an overwork, two building. So they, they started their hand with two wild cards. They were able to do five actions that turn, which is wild. And so then the ranger is going to come in. They're going to explore. Um, and then this next move here, uh, really sets the tone for the entire game. Uh, if you are a Vagabond player and you do this, it definitely, it hurts. Uh, you know, you're breaking the game balance here. Uh, it is, it's wacky. Um, but then we've got a combat coming out from the Ranger Vagabond. First, they shot the crossbow, then field hospital, the cat fills ho hospital, them back in. And then a combat... <laughs> And then another combat, it looks like. And I think at this point in the game, I was realizing, okay, this is, this is just, <laughs> this is going to be a wacky game. Um, in this type of a scenario, when you have something like this happen so early game, the reason why it's so dangerous is that this really does kind of kill the entire game balance and makes kind of the rest of the game just very weird. Um, the Eerie now have a nice advantage of having the cat essentially weaken the whole game and, um, uh, me as well, I have to try to get my engine going. So this first turn, I wasn't able to really do anything except for recruit around the woodland. So got a couple lizards, some of the bunny, some of the two foxes here. Um, and I also did a sacrifice since I had that wild. And now moving on to the Eerie's turn, they chose the commander as their leader. So kind of assuming that they're going to be doing some sort of combats, of course. 
um, as to be expected. So let's see what they are able to conjure up here. So it looks like they're going to be spawning here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> a lot of the table talk in here is just uh, essentially the Rager Vagabond <laughs> being like, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, that was rude. And then the cats just being like, yeah, that, that was that was rude. <laughs> All right. So we're seeing even more combat towards the cats. This is so sad. I mean, the cats just do not deserve this. It's just so brutal. So the, the Eerie come up on the, on the right corner, they come up and just take out two cats. They didn't even get a building, no build space. Um, so, I mean, this is just like such a wacky game state. I mean, this is just, you know, round two and we've got, you know, zero points for Eerie, two points for Marquise de Cat, six points for Ranger and zero for me as the Lizard Colt. And the Marquise de Cat just did uh, a recruit here uh, let's see what else they're going to pull out of their hats here. Because see, now in this scenario for the cats, it's really rough. Oftentimes you get a lot of players that will just kind of leave the game at this point um, because they got turn one keep stormed. I mean, the, the keep is gone. They're not going to get that back. It is a, a really big detriment. It's really hard to pull your game out from this. Um, oftentimes in digital, I just never leave my keep undefended like that because I know the digital players will do it in a table where I'm actually playing the real life game. I mean, there's so much more table talk present with everyone and it's really nice. And I'm kind of explaining that, you know, soon hopefully they put in you know some sort of the the, the vagabond infamy scoring um because just six points on turn one is just astronomical like why is this even a thing so we've got the marquise de cat they came in they moved their troops gathered them marched them together and they stormed and smacked the ranger uh obviously to get <laughs> get revenge on their poor keep here now the ranger moves over and this kind of surprised me because i would think that they would move away from the cats now that their movement's going to be uh, stunted and they just took some hits so looks like they're going to be continuing in on the carnage though they crossbowed the cat and they are going to be getting three tokens here however we're ambushed by the marquise de cat which is awesome but this is just another one of the things like this is absolutely brutal how many points the ranger gets from this this is this is their second turn and they are at 12 points in the game second turn 12 points like what on earth so me as the lizard colt i need the game to go long and right now <laughs> it is looking like it's going to be the fastest game ever. So I'm going to go ahead and lay a garden in my fox clearing on the bottom. Whenever I'm playing the lizard cold, I'm trying to get those, those gardens in places that are protected. I see that there's some open spaces in that top bunny clearing, and that's making me really excited. So I start recruiting up in the top there uh, because that's kind of where I want to set my second uh, bunny garden since I've got bunny cards. So I think it's, I think it's going to be pretty handy here. Uh, now it's going to be the option to actually craft some cards. Now with this new Partisans deck, it actually makes crafting cards so much easier for factions that have troubles uh, crafting cards. So um, being able to just have all those options to craft on, you know, turn two is just awesome. Um, but I didn't need any of those cards because see, as the Lizard Colt, you want suited cards. You want to keep them. You want to build the best hand. And I didn't craft um, the boots there because I don't want to give the ranger any more movement than they have already because they're already um, hostile with the cats. I don't want them to be able to move around the board. So not going to be crafting that. Okay, so now we've got the Eerie Dynasty. They're going to be moving up a couple of troops that they just recruited and they're going to be attacking the cats. I just feel so bad for the cats here, but they're going to be taking out that recruiter, getting the victory point and laying down a roost on the top right mouse clearing. So it is two, two, 12, and then me at zero. Um, obviously I'm going to say, I'm sorry, cats. Like this is just this brutal. Um, by the way, the cats stay in the game, this entire, the, the entire game they stayed. So just, uh, kudos to the cats player. I was so thankful for them to, to be able to just stay and stick it out here. All right. So now what are the cats going to do? They have just been absolutely shredded. Um, so they're going to be, it looks like consolidating. They're doing some movement. Uh, and they're going to be moving back over to where that ranger is, presumably to attack the ranger again, because 
that's the thing is like, you know, with this kind of environment, what the ranger really did was since they took the keep turn one, they were kind of forcing the cats to be on a permanent vendetta. Um, which really sucks for both, basically both players. Like this just is not fun. Um, the ranger now has to go back to the forest on their third turn, but they're at 12 points. So, you know, I'm sure they're feeling like, oh, well, I just, you know, I'm doing really well. So now it's my turn. Um, my outcast changed to mouse. So it's no longer hated here. And I've got some options for conspiracies. Um, I think that I only, I only have two acolytes right now and they're already calling out that it's going to be, you know, my game, but guys, the, <laughs> the game has to go so slow. I would have to catch up to a 12 point lead is what I am trying to attempt to convince the table of, because like I said, as the lizard cult, you have to use table talk consistently. So even though I know that this game is just going to absolute crap right now, I mean, this is, this is not looking good. Um, I'm talking like, I will never be a threat because that's kind of what you just have to do with the lizard cult. Like I just need so much more time. I'm always behind. That is literally how the lizard cult are. Uh, do not attack me. Do not worry about me. Uh, and so I end up skipping on doing any acolyte movement. I'm going to get my second fox garden up, which with the lizard cult, your whole goal as early as possible is to get scoring and get two gardens of one suit out. So to be able to do that was really, really important. Get that second garden and then score it. Now I'm going to be getting out my, um, or sorry, I'm going to be getting out a recruit, two recruits in that bunny clearing. The reason for that was because I didn't want to go uh, garden and uh, well, actually, see, I couldn't do a garden there because he ruled there. But uh, originally, my plan was to get a garden there. But because I couldn't, I ended up having to just recruit there, it looks like. So uh, that makes sense. I'm trying to eventually get a garden there. That would have been nice to be able to. But now I want to keep on to those bunny cards because that's going to be kind of my plan in the future to get a bunny garden in that top middle bunny clearing. Um, and so also the, the whole goal with the lizard cult, you want to get two gardens out of each suit as fast as possible. That is kind of your first goal. If you can do that, you get amazing card draw. You're going to be drawing four cards at the end of each round. And that is really the meat and bones of this faction here. So now we've got the Eerie. Um, they're going to be obviously doing their recruit. Let's see how they move. So they're going to be sending a little eerie warrior from the fox to the mouse and back to the fox. And I wonder if that was just an undo or if they are just parading to essentially just complete and follow their decree. And this, this commander is just is teasing a little bit, moving right into that bunny with basically the last and remainder of the Marquis de Cat's forces. But it looks like they decided to just send a couple of troops uh, down to the mouse. Okay, they're teasing again. Holy moly. They they really... So they didn't know what they were doing there. Um, and so they just did some movements. Uh, they redid their whole decree sign assignment because they, they didn't like what they did. So they redid it there. All right. So moving a bird into that mouse clearing um, and another bird into the other mouse clearing both on the right side of the map uh, and looks like they're both going to get taken out there um, but they're still going to lay that roost because they were able to secure that middle mouse clearing And the cats, at least they still have a sawmill, so they're still going to get one wood. Um, but as we can see throughout this current position that they're in, this is this is really rough. They're they're in a very rough position right now. And I'm just talking about how because, uh, you know, everybody was kind of talking about, oh, my gosh, the turn one keep this sucks. And I just basically explained, yep, it does suck in games with a lot of table talk. Oftentimes this just doesn't happen. Um, there's just so much about root that matters with like table talk and game balance. And basically the discussion of once you start knowing this game really, really well, I feel like you start actually playing worse at times because I assume that other players won't do something that will essentially throw the game in another player's hands. And 
you end up getting into these crazy situations where like I'm thinking three turns ahead and then a player makes like an actually bad move and that actually ends up being a detriment to everyone at the table because sometimes that game balance is more important than what you feel like is a good move. Um, okay, so the cats did something really well. They essentially just moved out. I, I would have seen, if I were the cats player right now, I would have liked to secure the place where they have that sawmill because this is just looking so weak. It is ripe for attack. Um, I would be basically trying to get as many warriors over there as possible. Um, we're, we're going to see that ranger doing a, doing a little crossbow attack and attacking the cats again. I mean, this is just, it's, uh, it is just brutal. Um, they're going to get two more points. That's going to put them at 15 uh, and they got the point for the warrior. So they're at, at 15 now and they're going to attack again. They're going to get some more. See, this is why I was thinking it would have been awesome if they would just kind of secure those buildings, but I'm sure it's so hard with their action economy right now. So 17 per points for the Ranger right now. Um, 18 points now that they explored. So they've got just a lot of stuff going on. This is just, it's just brutal. It's just, just brutal. So my turn here. Um, luckily the cats did move out of that top bunny clearing. So I'm going to be able to do my, my ultimate plan here. And then um, I'm still kind of debating, it looks like, on doing a, um, oh, there it is. Okay, there it is. There it is. So I moved over and tried to attack the ranger, tried to get a smack in, tried to, you know, convince the table that I was still here, um, uh, and I got ambushed, so that did not work. So I went ahead and sanctified one of the Eerie's guard, or sorry, one of the Eerie's roosts there, and I laid down a garden in the top area. I think I end up undoing this because what I didn't mean to do was place two gardens. I only needed one because I wanted to use the other card to score. So that's why I only placed one, then scored, and it has, you know, four lizards there. It's really well defended. Then I went ahead and scored for the fox as well. Did a sacrifice because I got that wild card. And I'm going to go ahead and just reinforce. See, the most important thing is you want to have these clearings very highly protected. Now, I'm keeping the fox cards. I'm trying to keep a bunny card. I want to be scoring these every single turn now that I have the engines built. I want to be doing it every single turn that I can. If I can score, I have to score. That is how you have to play the lizards once you get those engines started. All right, so we've got the Eerie. And they are going to, what am I, I'm talking again, just talking about the birds, believing in them to smack the ranger. Essentially, we have to send the ranger to the forest every single turn is what I'm trying to convince everybody. And it's kind of the truth. Otherwise, we will all lose the game. The other thing is that if we all go hostile, um, it might help with, you know, the movement capabilities. But then that means that all of us, he's going to be able to score with, with all of us. So, um... It's not the best, but it looks like we're all going to be hostile with them now, so. Okay, you know, I keep getting psyched out. <laughs> the, the Eerie's movement is so sporadic. Oh, man, it's wild. Uh, so the Eerie is still figuring out what they're doing right now. Moving into that bottom mouse clearing it looks like and furthering deeper into the central fox clearing the most interconnected space on the autumn map and then it looks like they're sending one warrior back just to fulfill that decree and doing a little attack <sighs> wow that's good i mean even with a roll of one they still hit two it's pretty powerful the commander is pretty good i don't like it as a first leader in I mean I only like it as a first leader in very certain circumstances um it is brutal it's very very brutal then they were able to lay down a roost in that bottom mouse clearing it looks like so then we've got the Marquise de Cat they have been basically wiped out um they have got one recruiter and six cat warriors so when they're building buildings they're not going to be scoring any points for them right now um because they basically have to build a sawmill the sawmill will be free but will not give any victory points and then in a perfect world they would essentially overwork it and then hopefully get another building out, which would be maybe another sawmill, just to start up the process of getting two wood every turn at least. So 
yeah, they're gonna be sending six cats. At least they have a lot of cats, you know, at least they have a lot of bodies because that's really, I mean, if they didn't have a lot of that, that would be really bad. So it looks like they, they pulled their, their cat from, from my clearing in the bottom left bunny clearing and uh, just still consolidating, it looks like. Now, I think they will probably build a building. Looks like they moved again. Okay, interesting. I'm curious what they're trying to do. Okay, they are going in and um, yeah, they're, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I get it. Like when you get turn one keeped, like this is the type of things that you're gonna have to deal with as the ranger. You're gonna get attacked as many times as possible by those cats. I mean, they're gonna, they're, their entire life vendetta is gonna be to just take you out. So it's good to see the ranger just getting completely smashed here by, by the eerie and by, by the cats, you know, because nobody likes to play a game where the, the very start of it starts with the turn one keep and there's 12 point ranger on turn two for them. Like n you're going to be a threat at that point. So they're getting sent back to the forest already twice this game. I mean, it's just, it's wild. And then my turn comes around and I'm just going to go ahead and convert that eerie because, you know, I already had a garden there and the garden stayed alive, luckily. So I'm going to score for my fox and I'm going to score for my bunny. Like I said, I want to be scoring every single turn. So that puts me at 11 points Now I have the option to start a garden, but I feel like I'm very weak over there and I need to reinforce that garden. I don't want it to get removed just yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a thing called dominant swapping or a dom swap where I use a wild card to take the mouse dominance card and then I'm going to use the suited mouse dominance card to recruit twice in there um, and that is called dom swapping you just use a wild card to take one of the dominant suited cards in order to essentially get a suited card so that you don't have to use the wild for a sacrifice um, if you're not doing that as a lizard cult player then um your life will be rough because that is one of the sure ways to get suited cards in your hand. Always be checking those dominance cards and just click claim, spend a wild or, you know, it, it's really the best way. So I'm at 11 victory points. I'm actually feeling I'm in a pretty good spot, but like, you know, it's just <laughs> the ranger just has so much potential to just run away with this game. So, um, not really feeling confident at all. And I think the birds are now kind of ramping up a little bit. They've got quite a bit of eerie units. They've got six on the side. Um, ah, man. Okay, so it looks like they're, they're abandoning that mouse clearing. They're going to come in and <laughs> they're probably going to attack me. Let's see here. Oh, boy. And I'm over here just table, you know, as much table talk as I can, I'm, I'm typing like a madman right now, just being like, no, nah, don't worry about me. Seriously, I need the game to go incredibly long in order to win. And the game is not going to go long. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to get my garden wiped out here. It looks like, uh, man, sad day. Um, so this is going to take a random card from my hand and it had to take the one card I didn't want, the fox ambush. <laughs> I, you know, whenever I play the Lizard Cult, it always feels like when I get attacked and lose my gardens, um, the best card in my hand has to be the one that gets discarded, and it always makes me just so sad. <laughs> okay, so now the scores are a little weirder. So um, the Eerie is at 10 now, the Cats are at 3, the Ranger at 18, and me at 11 points. Um, and, you know, we're, <laughs> I mean, just four, five, five rounds? six rounds five rounds I think it's five rounds or so in all right so what are the cats going to do now now they've got five warriors in a very nice clearing what they need to do is they need to lay down a sawmill that is what they need to do looks like they recruited they're gonna be moving I think they're gonna are they gonna take this this eerie building? Nope, they're gonna they're gonna save their cat from my clearing, um, which is good. I mean, it's smart. They need to consolidate some troops, so I like that play. I think that's pretty wise. And they're gonna drop the sawmill there, which I think is a. I don't know. I don't know. I might have dropped it in the fox clearing. I don't know. That's a hard. That's a hard tell. I mean, either way, they they at least got one down. 
Then we've got the Ranger. Um, they're going to be moving over and uh, looks like they're going to be meddling around the Eerie Dynasty player now. Uh, they're getting out of that forest. They're going <laughs> to fully healed again. Um, so yeah, they're going to do that. Looks like they did a quest there. Um, oh, nope, not a quest. My bad. Um, looks like they are just going to go ahead and explore and choose some cards to discard. So didn't do much this round. Oh, actually, they did do a quest, but they drew cards. My bad. So they did a quest, they drew cards, and then um, they went ahead and explored. Now, I have three acolytes, and I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to do any uh, conspiracy actions here. Um, I don't believe... I don't remember if I do or do not. Let's see here. So, looks like I am going to consider doing... Um, a little move. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. So here I'm just going to send a warrior out from the <laughs> the fox clearing. And I'm going to take out this roost for free here. Um, thank goodness they didn't have an ambush. That was kind of nice. So I just got an extra point. That puts me at 12. And now I'm going to go ahead and it looks like I'm going to do some recruiting. Get a mouse over here in this undefended roost. Won't be able to take care of it, but at least I'll kind of start getting there. And I'm going to score for my bunny. Like I said, I gotta score every single turn. That is just how it goes. And I'm gonna go ahead and claim a Fox card. Once again, that Dom swap using my wild to claim the Fox dominance, spending the Fox dominance to score Fox. Trying to score every single turn, that puts me at 16. And because my card draw is so insane, I went ahead and got four cards. I'm back to a full hand. And now I've got all these suited cards to use for scoring in future turns. This is what you want as the Lizard Colt. I am now essentially online ready for action. <laughs> it takes that long really to, to really feel like you're kind of ramping up. Now we've got the Eerie Dynasties player. Uh, they're going to do a couple of recruits around. They've got, oh my gosh, eight Eerie in that mouse roost. That is a lot of birds. Uh, they're going to move one, it looks like. I don't know if they're committed to this. This might be one of those situations where they just go back. Let's see here. Oh, interesting. Okay, yep. So they're going to be moving for Eerie to the mouse clearing on the bottom. Um, they're probably a little bit angry that I took that roost out, but I'm actually unsure. I think they might just drop a roost in there, just, just drop one back. Um, so this is one of the reasons why I would have liked to see the Marquise de Cat actually put that sawmill over in their fox clearing just because there was already a lot of action going on in this mouse clearing, and I just think it would have been wiser if they had kind of Kept a safer position at this point. Okay, and the Yuri are going to take a smack at the Ranger because, like I said, nobody likes the Ranger. We are we're all taking smacks at the Ranger whenever we can. We want to send that Ranger back to the forest as soon as possible. And again, two incredibly good rolls. Man, that is going to put the, the ranger back into the forest here soon. That was brutal. That was, whew, man, that was like two hits for three uh, in a row. That was just whack. Then they're going to go ahead and lay down two roosts. Okay. All right. Nice. So like I said, the, the, the Eerie Dynasties is kind of in a good position right now. I mean, they've got quite a bit of birds on the board and they are spreading out those roosts pretty well. Um, and they're leaving one defended, which is kind of nice because, sorry, one undefended because kind of what you want to do as the area at some point is kind of just start not caring about those roosts because then you can lay down more roosts and not go into turmoil. So it's kind of just, you know, it doesn't matter if you lose a roost as long as you can replace a roost, you're good. So I like that they left that, that mouse one undefended with basically the intention of it being removed at some point in order to lay more in the future. All right, and then the Marquise de Cat. Hmm, what are they going to do? So I'm, I'm now stating in the chat, uh, birds are in a good position now. Um, so yeah, and then I'm stating that this is just such a wacky game because it really is. Like I said, turn two ranger at 12 points. It's just, you know, it's going to be weird. So the Marquise de Cat did a march. Um, now they're laying down a recruiter and then going to recruit. 
Um, once again, it's, it's, <laughs> they love to live on the edge here. So I, I'd wanna, I would want to set up camp in the mouse clearing with two build spots because it's a little bit further away, less in the way of the other factions. It gives me time to build up a little bit, but I understand. I mean, at least they're building, I mean, as long as they're building. So the ranger was sent back to the forest third time this game because... Gosh, this commander play here. I mean, you know, maybe this commander play was just way ahead of even my thinking. I think, I guess it was before the Vagabond chose Ranger, but the commander is a, a nice rude thing for the Ranger early game to deal with because they're just going to be taking the extra hit every single time. So I scored for Bunny. Um, it's going to put me at 18 points. And okay, going to go ahead and do a recruit. And gonna go ahead and do another recruit over in the mouse. I'm just kind of building that up before I lay down a, uh, eventually I wanna clear out that roost and put down two there, uh, two mice gardens. And then I went ahead and uh, looks like I just reinforced my, um, my fox clearing down there. I wanna make sure that I have at least four troops there. And draw back up, discarded some cards, kept on to some of those foxes to keep scoring and it looks like I didn't have the chance to to keep on to a bunny card but I could just dom swap with the wild so okay eerie dynasties 14 points what are they going to do here gonna get a couple of recruits so they have to do two mice recruits now yeah at some point I was thinking like it would be nice if we could you know turmoil them with these mouse recruits but Dude, this board was just so wacky. Like it was hard to think of ways. And like as the lizard cult, you really can't move um, unless you get a lot of acolytes. And you know, I wasn't getting attacked at, at this early game stage and I'm, I'm not keeping onto my wilds, you know, because I'd rather just use those to score than to sacrifice. That's really not that great. You want to just be scoring. So really hard for me to get to those those mice roosts but like this is a pretty bold time because you know they just left another mouse uh <laughs> another mouse roost undefended there but they they moved across the map to to get to another mouse clearing and probably to get down two more roosts here so all right gonna do a combat against those poor poor cats and gosh gonna take no casualties what an astronomically good roll and here another great roll no casualties on either of those combats just crazy laying down two roosts holy moly they've got all seven of the roosts out and scoring that that puts them at 19 points so now let's just take a look at the score track here because <laughs> <laughs> on round two, having the Ranger at 12 points and all of us basically at zero, we've now got the Eerie at 19, the, the Cats four, I mean, hey, it's better than zero, and then the Ranger 19, and then me, the Lizard Colt at 18. This game is just so weird, but it's, it is just so awesome that the Cats are just sticking in and, and not leaving because an AI Cat would just put themselves in some really, really bad situations that just makes the game go in even more crazy situations. So here I'm trying to put in the chat like, hey, if we don't touch any of their roosts, they will go into turmoil. Um, and that's really nice. That's that's what we want. We want to put the the uh, eerie into turmoil. So now I am looking. What are the cats gonna do? They're they're doing some maneuvering here, uh, moving some of their troops around. Okay, laying down another sawmill. Awesome. All right, that's good. That's good. They'll get some uh, two wood next round. Woo. Okay, Ranger is coming out of that forest again. Uh, moving into that eerie clearing and moving past that to the fox all the way to the right of the map. And I believe they are going to strike. Yep, they're going to use the crossbow, take out the eerie warrior and attack the now undefended roost. Now, this is one of the roosts that they needed to be destroyed in order to survive the game. If another roost was taken out, then uh, we would have a really big problem on our hands here. Now, I remember a key mistake. Okay, and the ranger is going to craft that hammer there at 24 points. This is just too close. Now, I am 
<laughs> really sad because there was actually a really good move that I could have done here. Uh, I ended up opting not to take out this roost in the mouse because if I took it out, I was fearing that the Eerie would be able to then replace the building uh, and not go into turmoil. But really what I should have done was I should have taken it out and then just built two gardens there. Uh, now they could have fought me through to get to it, but that would have put me in an even better position to have those gardens ready. So I wish I had done that, but instead I just, I went the safe route. I just didn't build, uh, I, I didn't take out that roost. Uh, and it looks like I'm just gonna be placing, just, just placing one garden there, but I could have gotten both gardens there if I had just taken it out with that conspiracy. But then I'm just gonna score, uh, looks like both for uh, Bunny Oh, no, sorry, just one for Fox. I didn't have a bunny card just yet. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and Don swap for one with this uh, wild crossbow. Get the bunny card and spend the bunny card to go ahead and get the the, the nice two points. <laughs> it's such slow incremental scoring as these guys. And it looks like I'm just going to lay one. And awesome, I am able to craft the coins, which I definitely plan to do. I was purposefully trying to discard those fox cards in order to be able to craft that for this turn. I don't know if you see, but if you if you go back in the video, you'll see that in the previous turn, I purposefully discarded fox cards in order to try and get it fox for my next round in order to craft those coins. Didn't mention that when it happened, but if you go back, you can look um, and it actually worked, which was awesome. So um, now I am at the point where I'm like, okay, this is getting kind of sketchy, I'm at 25 points. Um, I'm actually doing pretty good here and it's looking pretty like I could, I could actually pull this game through. So I go immediately to the chat and I'm like, VB will win this turn. The Vagabond will win this turn. It is just going to happen. If they don't get hit, they won. And the whole purpose of this was because I don't want to lose, you know? <laughs> so, uh, once again, I am just talking my way through this game. Just like, Hey, don't mind me. Um, because you know, I probably don't have the right cards in my hand. I have to have very specific cards in order to win the game. Uh, so the Eerie is going to move six warriors over there to the Rangers clearing here. And I'm hoping that they're going to take a shot at the Ranger here because like I said, their, their turn comes before mine. They could easily gather that six points. I'm just trying to convince the table. Like we can't let them win this turn. And the Eerie, they sadly are going to have to go into turmoil this turn because they cannot get those two roosts. So, uh, it's unfortunate. They're going to be able to lay down only one roost, but they're going to be going into turmoil on that second one. So they, they braved it up until this point. It's honestly so impressive because they had two suited <laughs> builds. Like, that's just crazy. What an insane level Eerie player here. Kudos to the Eerie player. Alrighty, and man, they, yeah, it looks like, you know, these end game puzzles just start getting really crazy and it looks like they're just thinking for a while that turn timer's starting to go. They're gonna take a swing at the Ranger here. And oof, gonna be ambushed, gonna be counter ambushed. Woo! <laughs> Wild. Uh, it looks like they're gonna get one hit because they got the infamous zero zero roll, but at least they got one because of that commander ability. What a game. All right, and I believe they have to do another combat still. Yep, they're gonna go ahead and attack me, it looks like. Okay, so that was actually really lucky. So they attacked me, but I got two hits on them and they only had one warrior. So I actually destroyed the roost on an off turn, which gave me from 25 to 26. All right, what are the Marquis going to do is the real question. They're at five points. Um, it's kind of that end game puzzle. Ah, oh, man, what are they gonna do? What are they gonna do? So they're gonna do a recruit, get some more cats out. Hmm. Looks like they're gonna do some marching. They're gonna go in that nice, nice mouse clearing over there. They're gonna take all six of their warriors. 
and they're gonna move even further back to the ranger. Now see, this is what happens when you do a turn one keep. You're gonna have a cat on you the whole game. As long as that cat player at least stays, I mean, this is just, it's brutal. They're gonna get attacked again. Uh, that's two more hits to the poor ranger here. It's gonna put their last turn on a real strain. Oof. This is just... <laughs> All right. Um, so, now let's see. The ranger is going to be playing their last turn here if they can win it. Oh, gosh. Because if they don't win here, then I am going to be closing the game. So, what does the ranger do? Now I'm looking at my board too, and I'm, I'm seeing that, you know, all I have to do is two scores and I have those cards to do that right now. I have the capability to score. He gets, so the, so the Ranger gets a, a slip right now. Um, so yeah, and it's nice because everybody in the chat was like, hey, major respect to the Marquise player for staying in the game this whole time. Cause truly major respect, major, major respect. So the Ranger is gonna go over to me and it looks like they're going to probably take out my my poor little garden here let's see about that sure they're gonna do okay so the repair the the, the hammer repairing the the sword it looks like gonna go ahead and do a combat here rolled really well got the two hits of course and they still got still got a sword to spare so they're gonna go ahead and use that and take out my garden it's gonna make me discard a random card please do not be my bunny ambush phew okay just my fox card which is great that's gonna put them at 28 28 points uh it looks like they are not able to close it out though that's gonna give me my turn and i am in perfect position to do some scoring and um i want to make sure that i just you know i mean i really didn't even have to do this but why not you know show the power of the lizard cult because we need more people to play the lizard cult Need more people to practice with the Lizard Colt. We want to get the Lizard Colt to S tier, guys. Let's let's play the Lizard Colt more. Let's learn these crazy strategies. Let's just keep going. Use the Dom swapping. Get up your engine really early. Get those double gardens. It looks like I'm going to score for two here. And I'm going to score for two, putting me at 31 to win the game. Thank you guys so much for watching this just absolutely wild game of Root. If you enjoyed this game, please leave a like, comment down below. Um, I will go ahead and get more games out. I've got quite a few already stocked up to release for you. So definitely just show your support, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time.